Uh, yeah, obviously um, uh, excited for our guys to get into this week, get back into Big Ten play. Um, you know, when the schedule came out a long time ago, um, uh, knowing that we had to Wyoming, uh, which is going to allow us two bye weeks, uh, then um, obviously uh, moved Chattanooga into that, that Thursday night game. I thought it would be an advantage just going into the uh, Chattanooga game and then hopefully for an advantage for us getting ready to uh, play at Wisconsin. So I think our guys enjoyed a little bit of day off on Saturday, watch other people work. Uh, got a got a good jump yesterday and uh, today is a, a day off in our program. So we'll jump into it tomorrow, but I like where we're at from a health standpoint. Um, you know, Josh McCray, kind of a work in progress. He actually started running on land and uh, doing the things that uh, would indicate that he's getting closer uh, to his return. I don't know if it'll be this week or next week, but uh, excited for him to continue to move in the right direction. Um, uh, overall, the rest of our guys got out of it pretty healthy. Um, don't really foresee, I actually get uh, uh, Jamal Woods back. Uh, he's been out the last two weeks. He got cleared about 24 hours before the game last week. Uh, so to get him involved um, this week in practice will be a huge advantage. It's gonna be a tough game, obviously, uh, two teams that play a physical style of play. Um, and, and where that is, um, but otherwise everybody else should get back uh, to um, uh, being back with us and with that open up for questions. Fred, you've talked about these rematch games. I imagine what happened last year, this is going to be one you guys are looking forward to. Why do you think your program is more prepared to, to play Wisconsin now? Um, I think just the, the general work in progress, uh, but this is going to be a great one, right? Um, so this is week five, rematch two. Um, you know, last week when I got the question about playing on FCS opponent, I kind of gave the answer that I, I, I gave because this is the same thing, right? Um, we're playing a Big Ten opponent here, but it's really our second Big Ten opponent. It's uh, it's week week game five of our uh, 12 opportunities that were guaranteed. It's a second rematch game of seven, so um, a lot on the table, but uh, uh, this game is about Illinois going to Wisconsin and playing on a road uh, environment in a Big Ten conference. Um, I don't believe we've won there since 2002, it was pointed out to me. so. Um, not an easy place to win at. Um, obviously, I know that more than anybody. Uh, and I think the, the flip side of it is our guys uh, really, since we got together last January, we've kind of said what's behind us is behind us. What's in front of us is what matters. And, and they've really taken that approach all the way through till I left them yesterday afternoon. I expect this Saturday to be more to send. Coach, two very good and up and coming defensive coordinators going head to head. head, to head. What makes Jim Leonard and, and Coach Walters uh, so successful, what do you think? Um, you know, I had Jimmy as a player. I've never worked with him as a coach, but my guess is um, a lot of things that made him a great player is what makes him a good coach. And then just to compete against him uh, last year, you can see um, all the things that he does uh, kind of tie together. I'm sure he's really good. I know this from recruiting against him, that he's uh, uh, obviously a guy that has the ability to connect with players. It doesn't matter uh, DBs, wideouts, uh, running backs, uh, D linemen, linebackers. He's, a, he's probably very, very good at player communication. Um, He's his own man. Like I don't think he uh, does anything different than the things he believes in. Um, obviously, I've worked with Ron. I never knew him as a player, but my guess is some of the things that I've seen from him as a coach are probably what made him a good player as well. Um, uh, two very uh, uh, talented guys that their their results uh, show that. Um, I think they'd be the first to tell you it's not about Jimmy Leonard versus Ryan Walters. It's about uh, the teams that play on Saturday. Both of them are great competitors. So uh, excited to see uh, really all phases of the game on Saturday play out. Stan, thanks. What stands out about the way your defense has kind of embraced this, getting off the field on third down? I'm assuming you guys have a lot of success yeah. with defense. What stands out there? Well, again, it starts by what they're taught and what they're coached, um, but but some you know some really good players. I just think, you know, during the bye week, I, I took a look at uh, our roster and, you know, projected roster for obviously the rest of this year, but also in the years to come, because that directly affects how you recruit, right? And you know, up front you have, you know, uh, uh, really a three-man rotation at defensive end uh, that's that's pretty solid, pretty deep. Uh, Two-man to three-man rotation at nose guard. Uh, three or four guys on overhang players, outside backers, three inside linebackers that play really well, and, you know, four of the five defensive backs that have played a lot of really good football. Um, so um, three of the five, and then uh, Quan and, I'm sorry, um, uh, Spoo or, uh, Taz and, and Kendall are kind of new to the mix. but. You just got a lot of guys that play good football. Um, it's their second year with Ryan. I think all the same things you guys asked me questions about, you know, with the offense continue to grow with Barry. Now it's their second year with Coach Walters, what they say and what they hear. I saw a quote from Johnny uh, last week, and he, I think, was asked kind of the same question. He basically said something to the effect of, you know, we have a better understanding of what Coach Walters wants now more than ever. Um, I think that's really how our entire program feels. 
uh, anybody that's been here since we've gotten here. So uh, it's just more of the same. What makes Wisconsin so good in terms of the system? Obviously, you had a part in that and what they are now. Yeah. How does their system dictate what they are? Yeah, they, um, they've just continued to uh, evolve. Um, I think uh, when I got there as a defense coordinator, they ran a certain style of offense. And then when I took over, we uh, transitioned. Although Paul had been there one year, we really changed out everybody offensively um, uh, on the staff and, and, and then brought in an entire new defensive staff. So um, there was transition there. And then I think when I left, um, that brought in a, a, you know, a new group of coaches with Coach Anderson, but more importantly, Dave Aranda started that transition to the three down that they run today. Um, and Dave was there for a while, established himself, uh, obviously, in that, that system that got him future opportunities. And then um, when Paul came in, the uh, evolution to, to Jimmy has kind of been a, a spinoff of that. Um, uh, I think offensively, uh, you know, even when we were there, uh, uh, my Paul and I were together, it was, you know, we constantly had to go back and, you know, listen to all the run, 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 but it was a really bad, our good teams were balanced. Uh, they were a 200 run, throw on 200 catch uh, running. And, um, you know, then the, uh, I think the other thing that just, that, that environment, you know, Madison is, uh, uh, sold out crowd. One of the things that really jumped out to me when I left Wisconsin to go to Arkansas, I never had to really sit in a meeting and listen about ticket sales or, or, or um, you know, the uh, um, ability to uh, pack the, the stadium uh, when I went to Arkansas. And then obviously when I came here, it was just kind of a foregone conclusion that the crowd was going to be there. They're going to show up and it was going to be sold out. So that, that's, that's one of the things that really, um, you know, I don't think people have an idea that uh, an environment like that, how, how ideal that is to play in front of week in and week out. Along with, that, places. You, Sorry. along with that, you have a, a small group of guys who have actually played at Camp Randall yeah. with the fans. Like, what do you tell them about how to brace for that? Well, uh, a couple different things. Um, the good news is, kind of like when we went to Penn State in Minnesota last year, we knew we were walking into a hostile environment. Um, uh, Penn State has over 100, uh, I think 110,000 that we were walking into um, every stadium is a little bit different, but um, we, we have been able to have success uh, at stadiums when we were the uh, uh, you know um, the uh, visitors. Um, so I know they've done that already. Um, Camp Randall is a unique stadium. It's it's very vertical, so it's very loud. Um, they've obviously redone the one end zone, so I'm excited to see that. I haven't seen it. Um, obviously, I haven't been back there. I've been in Madison uh, uh, twice uh, since I left, but never on the football field in this environment. I've never been in the visitor's locker room as a competitor. So, um, but there are a lot of things I learned about uh, our visitors that visited us when I was there that I've definitely shared with our team. And we're kind of working through those things this week uh, from, from everything from, you know, their locker room is all uh, 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 very light blue. Uh, um, it's not quite pink, but it's light blue. Uh, it's very nice. It's a big locker room, a lot of space, a lot better than I would say most of the majority of the Big Ten Conference visiting locker rooms. It's one of the better ones. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a first class uh, uh, stadium that, you know, should bring a lot of fun to the, to the kids to visit. It starts a stretch of four games in division. Uh, is that part of the talking point with the team at all? Or is it kind of similar to what you were talking about last week with it's just the next team? Yeah, good point. Uh, so, you know, we, we've really kind of broken it down to the way the schedule laid out was we were going to play three games. One of those was going to be a Big Ten game, uh, take a bye week. Come back, play Chattanooga, then three divisional opponents, take a bye week, come back and play five. Big Ten, uh, with a couple of those being the crossover uh, at the beginning and the end, like right? start with Nebraska and, and end with Northwestern. So um, however you want to dice it, we're through four, so we're a third of the way through the total number of guaranteed. Uh, but we do have a stretch run here of three teams that I think as you look at them in the Big Ten Conference, uh, a lot of people look at them as kind of the um, a more physical group of, of opponents that you'll play between you know Wisconsin, uh, Iowa, and Minnesota, all three back to back. So, um, but our guys really do just focus on. We have a one and zero mantra every week. We're just trying to do what we have to do to get through this week to get one and zero on Saturday, and and then we kind of reset the reset the focus. And and uh, our guys have really bought into that. I would imagine a lot of people are focusing on Chase as the nation's leading rusher, but do you get a sense that the other ten guys on offense take some pride in that, especially with the guys up front? I think our, our, our team takes a lot of pride in how our guys play. Um, I saw a quote from uh, uh, Pilstrom that, that uh, somebody asked him in reference to, you know, uh, how does it feel to block for Chase Brown? You know, and he made a reference that he said, I expect him to pull off his shirt and so the Superman, all right, at some point. And that's just uh, uh, Pill just be having some fun with the moment. He said, I love blocking for Chase Brown. I did make a point after the uh, Wyoming game, uh, you know, the very opening play. Everybody made, uh, obviously, a, and, and deservedly so, that was Chase created that play. He made a guy miss in the background, bounced it, but it was really 
turned into a big play because of Alec Brown, or of uh, Pat Bryan straining down the field uh, to make a block. And I, and I just pointed out to them there, like every guy in offense, if you, if you want to be the guy, right, that doesn't give that extra step, doesn't give that extra strain, doesn't give that extra second of, of blocking that allows him to maybe get by you or break an arm tackle, um, uh, it's going to show up on film, and, and uh, our guys take a lot of pride in that. I think anytime he's in there, they feel he touches the ball, they have a chance to go the distance. When you were away, when you were in Wisconsin, you had a bunch of the really good running backs. Looks like they give a, they got another one now. Just yeah. what do you think about this guy? You know, you so um, one of the things that NFL teams like to do is they love to have comparisons, right? So I learned that when I was in the league, like you know. So this offensive lineman, who does he remind you of, right? Mm -hmm. And on this tight end, who does he remind you of? So I obviously naturally get the uh, comparison uh, Chase to any of my previous running backs. And, um, you know, I think he's a blend. Chase is his own unique animal. Um, uh, I've had very fortunate. I remember uh, playing in a Rose Bowl game where uh, my top four running backs eventually played in the NFL, first round draft picks, third round draft picks. Um, Chase has something that not a lot of guys have. Chase has... Uh, an incredible burst, so he can literally burst through a hole and show short area quickness. He also has long stride strength, right, which means he's long stride speed. He has the ability to pull away and create a big play. He has the ability to run through arm tackles, and he's a very physical back. And then the thing that probably sets him apart than a lot of running backs I've had, he has truly does have third down value, where he can um, he can catch the ball really well. He can be used in protection. He can be used uh, uh, as a blocker in, in down the field schemes. So um, he's a very unique. Uh, prospect and, and I mean this with all due respect he's a good player right now but he's getting better every game you're going against a good one from Wisconsin too yeah. so what do you think about him a couple good ones um, yeah, I think good, yeah right? Alan's good um, I, I think um, uh, that they they've prided themselves on their ability to run the football you know and uh, he obviously ranks in the nation's best as well so uh, we got a tremendous task out in front of us uh, it'll be our um, by far our biggest test defensively uh, to play against them and um, you know, I, I like the uh, I like the idea of this game. It's a really a true. If you're truly a Big Ten fan, you're going to love watching this game. Um, I think we've made strides from where we were a year ago, but that's only going to be determined by what you see on the field. Coach Lenny tells us that uh, he thinks the team is beginning to establish an identity. What do you, what do you think that identity is? Is it the identity that you envisioned? Uh, Coach Lenny, you talking about offense or yeah, is it a general that, question? Well, um, yeah. offense, yes, but. From your perspective with the whole team too? Yeah, I think any team, uh, you know, as it starts a season, they take an identity of their own. Um, you know, last year we had a, a, a really strong group of, you know, fifth and sixth year seniors that had their personalities come out. Uh, Doug Kramer was a very strong personality. Jake Hansen was a very strong personality. Um, uh, and, and, and I think you saw those guys in particular on both sides of the ball. We had two kickers that uh, in my coaching career are, you know, two of the better ones, combination platters I've ever been around. So the team really, I think, grew to those uh, those personalities and players. Um, this year, I knew we had a host of good players coming back, but now you have, uh, you know, Palcho, who has a different voice, uh, uh, Pilstrom. I think Julian Pearl has a really big voice in the offensive line. Luke Ford has put together a couple of do, two really good weeks of football back-to-back -back, um, uh, at, at the wide receiver position, you know, so everybody make big deal. Um, about uh, Chase Round rushing for 100 and two receivers catching the ball for over 100 in the first time in Illinois history. I don't know if I've ever had that in my history, right? So uh, a, a Coach Bielema's coach team uh, offensively looks a lot different than anything that I've been a part of. And it really is fun for me, enjoyable, um, great for me to, uh, you know, really uh, take the things that Barry's doing. And, I, I, you know, Coach Fry always used to say, right, like never ignore the things you know and, and never coach the things you don't. Um, and you know, so this learning curve as a head coach with an up-tempo offense, the way we practice, the way we game plan, the way we strategize has been a lot of fun. And then I think even like this morning, I got, I was with the defense staff for about a half hour about different techniques up front um, that, that, that we kind of just kind of put together as a defensive collective group and, and talk about how they could apply to, to our, our game plan this week. And, and then to be really honest, special teams coordinator with Coach Snyder, he and I uh, working together this year with Special teams has been a lot of fun um, in the return game and different aspects that we're using in special teams. So it's really just been a year that's uh, been a transition and we're four games into it and I'm um, excited to see where five goes. You see what you able have been able to do running the ball and throwing the ball, maybe just better complementing each other this season? Um, what were our numbers Saturday? Weren't they like right around 200 each? Uh, but I think it was, Tommy uh, you know, yeah, Tommy was through. What, but, Anytime you have balance like that, when it's not too skewed one way or the other, it's just you're, you're hard to defend. Um, 
Uh, I believe we had over 18 plus plays of 10 yards or more. When you have that many plays of 10 yards or more, you're explosive. And that's a very, very hard thing for a, a defense to, um, okay, we got to stop this, we got to stop that. Um, you have two receivers, and then I think, you know, Brian Hightower has shown that he can play the game fairly well um, and, and tight end. So, um, no, it's, it's not anything different than it's just a little bit uh, probably different in the way that it's getting accomplished. Brett, uh, you mentioned, um, you know, different offense than you've ever had. Obviously, you do it to win games. Yeah. But how did, how did you get to that point where this is the style you wanted to go? You know, um, I really had gotten to it even before me coming here. Um, uh, you know, I think when I, um, when, when, when it ended at Arkansas, right, I think you really, um, during the next 30 days, had to, just from coaches that had gone through that, really look at and take a self inventory, not only the first couple of days after it happened, but then go back like 10 days later, uh, and then especially, you know, 30 days later. And I kind of went through that whole process for about three years, right? And uh, I watched a lot of college football. Uh, I was watching prospects. Uh, I was going to different campuses. I remember being at Clemson. I remember being at Alabama. I remember being at uh, Oklahoma. I remember being at places that I'm like, okay, let's, you know, I, I would really sit down and talk to their offensive coaches, um, talk about tempo, talk about things, and really did a three-year study on when that next opportunity came, what I wanted to do, and, and obviously uh, made a selection uh, offensively. I, I think that at some point I realized it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be, and I knew where I wanted it to go, and that's when, when we made transition. Um, uh, I think when another big one for me was when I was at uh, I was in the SEC and I saw Alabama change. Um, that was a huge moment for me. Like, okay, they can go out and get literally the best players they want, really at any given point, um, and they knew where they needed to go. And then uh, an honest one, truly, is um, uh, when when other coaches got jobs in the SEC, they were trying to hire my coaches, right? And and that's when I knew, like, okay, I'm hiring the right guys. Well, we got to begin to do the right things, um, and, and that's kind of been the process. It's a major staff overhaul that Paul did at Wisconsin, especially offensively. New OC, new uh, offensive line coach, new running backs coach. Are you seeing them transition? Like, because I know Paul's still there, but is yeah, it into something a little bit different, even though the philosophy might be still the same. Um, uh, I, I I get it. I, I think that. Um, you know, so Joe Rudolph, who was the O-line coach there last year, was my tight ends coach when I was there. Bob Bostad, who's now the O-line coach, was my O-line coach when I was there. Um, he was coaching linebackers last year, but uh, I know he got involved with the O-line look team when we were uh, playing last year. So there's like fingerprints all over it. Um, Paul, uh, you know, is probably one of the guys that um, when I first got into coaching as a, well, as a head coach especially, but I was a defensive coordinator uh, when I first met him. He'd, he'd come on staff my last year. His uh, his first year was my last year's defense coordinator before we transitioned and uh, his knowledge, his uh, football acumen, his ability to relate to players and get along with them was uh, easily seen, right? And then I love competing against him a lot of times. Our scrimmages, uh, I had kind of grown stale and just kind of, okay, I'm going on playing defense against this offense, but he would bring something new to the table all the time and, and to keep your mind fresh. Um, I definitely see uh, Coach Bostad as the offensive line coach. I definitely see his fingerprints on what they're doing in the run game. Um, uh, I can see Coach Ingram, uh, you know, I played against the Ravens, so I kind of can see the elements of, of some stuff there that's beginning to happen. Um, uh, defensively, without a doubt, you know, Jimmy uh, has got a system in place and stays pretty consistent with that. But, yeah, you can you can see things. Um, you know, I challenge our players all the time. So we're playing Wisconsin, so as a defensive lineman, you're going to go against a left guard and a right guard. They're both playing guard in the same system, but they're both different players because of who they are, right? And And that's when... Now we're four games into it, or you know, five going into our fifth game. You get a lot of film on who they are, right? Like, what is that? Who is that guy, right? What I know what his jersey number, I know what his name is, but how does he play? And and that's the fun part for coaching. Brett, I know you said time and again this is about Illinois for Wisconsin. Just in your first game, you said you haven't been back though. Yeah. Since you have you thought at all over the last year and a half about what that might be like to go back into this place you've had so much success? I've thought about it a lot, but probably not in the context of what you think, right? Like, um, so one of the benefits of this, which is, you know, uh, related, unrelated, is um, really the first time it's ever happened to me. Um, I was at uh, Wisconsin as a defense coordinator. And so the first time I went back to Iowa, right, as, a, as an assistant coach, uh, I was a defense coordinator. Um, if we won that game, we were going to be Big Ten champs the way the games played out that day. Somebody had to lose that day. I can't remember who it was. And that person lost, right? And then we went out. Jimmy Leonard, if I'm not mistaken, intercepted the first two possessions. Uh, um, that we played that day. And 
Um, we were playing really good defensively. Ended up losing the game. Um, and it, I really didn't have one emotional moment until after the game, right? I, I was after the game. Uh, part of it was seeing, you know, some of uh, some former players, um, uh, seeing Kirk, but also as a former player, I remember going up and, and coming out of the players' locker room as a player and as an assistant and watching a band in the post game, right? I used to just sit there and kind of watch it. And so I think that the effect that that had on me is there really was no effect leading up to the game. A lot of people were talking about it, um, but it had no effect on me before the game, but afterwards. And it was interesting. Um, I saw that recently of another coach that returned home. And then, uh, you know, the first time uh, that, that I went to Wisconsin as, or that I, when I went to Iowa as a head coach really was really no factor, right? Like it really truly didn't. We were fortunate enough to win the game, but as a head coach, you know, I thought there was gonna be a lot more to it and it wasn't. So this year, this is really no different, right? Um, you know, we, we've obviously uh, played Wisconsin last year. It was my first time going back there. I think because of the experience that I've already had at other places, it's not gonna affect me. Um, I mean, I got friends and family and all that jazz, um, but, um, you know, it, it, it's really not an effect. I think as coaches, you're probably more numb to it than the outside world because it really is just about the game you're involved in. And have I thought about it? Yes. I talked to, you know, I'll talk to them about how we're going to handle the locker room, which I already mentioned. I, I know where the hotel is. Uh, I know the layout of that hotel. I know the dynamics. I know 11 o'clock game, right? So one of the factors in this this game is it's our first 11 o'clock game of the year, which to me is just as big effect as anything else because now you're having pregame meal at seven o'clock versus you know three o'clock in the afternoon for a seven o'clock game. There's a big difference there. Um, uh, they obviously have a third quarter at the end of third quarter tradition that is very uh, very unique to them, kind of like last year uh, at Iowa when they waved uh, to the children's hospital. Every place has traditions that you educate your players on. At least I do. Um, uh, that that's part of the fun of playing in this conference. What's your thoughts on that? Tommy DeVito is progressing in the passing game in general. You know, Tommy, uh, I've said it every week, you know, he, he, he just continues to impress me. His, his uh, football acumen, his intelligence, him and Barry really have a special relationship. Uh, I think Art and RJ in particular, uh, the knowledge and power of those three quarterbacks share together because they're he hearing an offense for the first time too and kind of working off of it. Um, I think Tommy's done a really good job of building relationships uh, in the team, uh, not just with the offensive players, but I, I think I told you a story the other day. I, Turn around, he's sitting with the defensive line. Like he just has bought into what we've been, uh, what we've been selling him, and what we've been preaching to him since he got here. And every week, uh, it just continues to get better. Statistically, I think three of the top five running backs in the country right now are in the Big Ten West, including, of course, Chase Brown. Is that welcome to the Big Ten West, or is that uh, is there anything more to it? And that's just well, you know, I've style. seen a couple. You know, I watched Minnesota, Michigan State the other day, and obviously uh, last year that the running back from Minnesota was injured, so. He's a very, um, I think he's got like 13 straight games of 100 yards. That doesn't just happen, right? BJ and those guys have done a really good job of accentuating him. Uh, obviously, we're facing an opponent this, this week that has uh, one, I think he's number four, number five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, I, I, I love Chase and what he is. Um, I, I don't know if it's anything more than just a uh, coincidence, but uh, it's very good running backs that perform what they do well and, and getting very well coached. Did, did you? Um, this is your first time back at Madison. The concentration will be on you as far as the media and the fans go. Does that take your pressure off the players? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I, I kind of knew this day was coming, so I've literally, I think I shared this with the other day, for the last six months I've gotten, uh, I've received uh, as many uh, opportunities to do, you know, exclusive return from newspapers, magazines, uh, television shows, uh, and I've just said, I, I made a decision early on, I was going to say no to all of them. Um, uh, because I don't want the feature to be on me. Um, but I also, you know, told our players the other day, like, listen, I know this is going to get a lot of questions about me, but this is this is about Illinois. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. Um, I, again, I think it's a lot easier for the outside world to to, to focus on that rather than uh, our football team. I think I sitting there watching the game Saturday night and, and you know, I knew I was going to get some banter from our, our current players. I knew they watch it. They kind of, they kind of shoot me text every now and then um, while football's going on. Um, I, I just I just like the chemistry of our team, and that's what I'm focusing on. I don't know if it relieves or gives any more pressure. You only got you only got to see him one game last year, but with CJ Hart, did you know when you talked to like Coach Dorian when you were recruiting him out of the portal that he would be this versatile for you? On yeah, you know, so Dave and I are really close, um, and Dave, if I'm not mistaken, I might have actually called about another player, and, and Dave said, "Hey, there's a guy, CJ Hart, who's in the portal. I didn't want to lose him. Uh, I think it'd be a really good. He knew how I'd want to play defense." Um, so yeah, we, we reached out to him. Uh, the great thing about CJ is, uh, uh, 
you know, for you guys that have interviewed him, he's a pretty serious demeanor kid, uh, very athletic. He is, I think, a little bit of a gamer. He, he shows up in games more than, not that he doesn't practice well, he just kind of does that. Um, but, you know, when he came to me last spring and told me that he was going to be expecting a child, you know, I said, okay, well, here's what you got to think about. And he, like, looked at me, and he never really thought through those moments, right? And, and so I remember we had two meetings in the summer, kind of planned out, hey, when this comes, what are we going to do, right? It, I think it was due actually Michigan week, and so she, uh, the baby, she came a couple weeks early. Um, I knew the mom was going to be in Florida, and he was going to be here, which is a whole, you know, when I had my first one, I know <laughs> I didn't handle it well, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know these kids, when they're going through these moments, uh, the more we can walk through it. I think that gave him a piece coming into this year, and then uh, he called me, uh, yeah, whatever it was, Wednesday morning, and said, hey, coach, you started. I said, okay, well, we've talked about this moment. Um, you know, it, it's uh, Tuesday, I guess it was Tuesday or Wednesday morning. I said, let's let's play this game Thursday. We'll get you on the first flight Friday morning and get you back Monday afternoon. How's that sound? He's like, perfect. I'm like, all right, so let's roll. Um, and that's kind of just CJ, you know, his dad's a pastor. Uh, CJ, a very faith-based kid. Um, uh, his parents are incredible uh, role models for him. So I think the maturity that he has when he found this environment, and I think one of the things that I always say to our guys is, hey, just so you know, it isn't like this everywhere else, right? Like the way we do things for you, the things we provide, the things Josh Whitman allows our guys to have access to from a victory dinner to, uh, you know, the, the way we put a helmet on them to the way we take care of them. These things aren't very common in other places. Um, you can't just you know, spend money and have an effect. Our kids know everything we do matters. And, and I think CJ kind of kind of tested the whole group like, hey, I've been in other places. It isn't always like this. And, and that gives us a lot of street credit too. Thanks, guys.